All right, welcome back to chapter six, attempt number two, where we're talking about cost analysis. So, one of the things that we're trying to do is to get some nomenclature set up. So, one of the things that I do is abbreviate total cost, variable cost, and fixed cost with these letters. It's a standard abbreviation, so you should probably get used to it. And one of the other things that we'll, what you should realize is that total cost will always be the variable cost plus the fixed cost. And again, these are all short run terms. In the short run, you have variable costs and you have fixed costs. And if you wanted to have another graph of, of these types of costs, here is sort of a cost analysis on a, on a dollar amount versus number of units produced. Notice that fixed cost is a straight line across, or fixed, so it doesn't change for, for each unit that you produce. Variable cost, notice that it's zero when you don't produce anything, but as you produce each unit, each unit costs a certain amount to produce. And then total cost is just the sum of each one of those things where you're going to have a certain amount of fixed costs regardless of however many you produce. Remember, fixed costs are just anything that it costs you to, 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 to run a business regardless of whether you're actually producing anything. So, so things like rent, things like mortgage payments that you have to make on a loan that you have, all that kind of stuff that, that's fixed regardless of whether you even produce one unit. Now, these curves, they're nice curves, they, they're good for setting the table, but beyond that, nah, we don't use them for anything else, so it's no point keeping them around. So let's get rid of them. But what we will be using on a regular basis are these curves. The average total cost, ATC, and the average total cost as a formula is the total cost divided by the amount of units that you've produced. Right, so in the beginning, you start, you know, your average total cost goes down because you start to produce more and it's easier to produce a whole bunch more, but eventually you, you, you get to this point where you've mac, you know, minimized the amount of cost that you, can predict, that you can produce at, and in order to produce more, it's going to cost you more per unit. Similar, this is average variable cost, where you've just removed the fixed cost. Again, it's the same type of formula. Take the variable costs and divide by the actual quantity. And the, the interesting curve that's right here is the marginal cost. Marginal cost, that's one of the curves that we're going to be looking at on a regular basis throughout the rest of the chapter. Marginal cost is the additional total cost when you produce one more unit. And the reason you want to look at that so closely is that that's the analysis you use to determine whether or not to produce one more unit. If you produce one more unit and it costs you more than you're going to sell it for, should you produce it? Uh-uh, so don't, all right? So marginal analysis, that's something we'll get to in a little bit later, and the marginal cost is something that we'll use in order to do that. We'll, we won't get to that until we get to actually looking at revenue. So for now, just realize this is the way it looks. All right, now, this is all short-run analysis, all right? We haven't looked at anything in the long run. Well, let's consider that, though, just a little bit, and see what we see, all right? So... Let's look at it from the long run analysis. And in the long run, you could produce lots and lots of units if you think you really want to, right? You could build a factory that's, you know, as big as the entire city of Janesville, right? If you really wanted to, you could try and do that. If you'd find enough land, find enough people hire to come in and build you that number of buildings, right? So when you first start producing, you'll build a small factory. And here's what your average total cost curve looks like in a small factory. Realize we've spread this out, right? This is a much longer curve than over here. This, the number of units over here may be only a million, whereas the number of units over here on this curve is something like 100 billion, right? You could really truly get carried away. And so this is the way your average total cost curve goes. And you're, you're producing, say, right here. So the price is somewhere up here. So you're making profit and it's good, but the cost, the average total cost has hit this, this curve where it's turning around, right? It's starting to cost more to produce it. Probably what's happened here is that, you know, let's imagine if you're building Ford Tauruses, right? This is what your average total cost curve would be if you only had, say, one shift. One shift working and it would only, you know, it would produce at a, at a maximized or a minimized cost right down here. But since the cars cost so much and you can sell them so much, you want to produce more, and so you keep pushing those people out. You hire a second shift, maybe you even hire a third shift, and you start giving those people overtime to come back and produce because they're really good at it. And what ends up happening is that you gather all of your accountants and your smart people, your economists, and they say, you know, looking at your business, this is what your average cost is. If 
you throw away this old factory that you have, which is nice, but it's too small, and you built a bigger one. Here's what your average total cost would be for a bigger factory. Allow the size of your factory to change. In the short run, that's a fixed cost. In the long run, nothing's fixed. So we've allowed it to change. Notice what happens. Notice what would happen if you actually built that bigger factory. Your average cost for producing as many cars as you are goes down drastically. This is exactly what people are looking at when they're trying to determine when to change the size of a factory. Their average total cost curve is going to keep going up and up and up. Once it gets above the price, that's when they start looking at building a bigger factory. And this gives you a, a bit of an overall look at what's going on in the long run. Now, let's suppose that we put all of these, you know, sort of average total cost curves together and let the variation of the size of the firm be truly, uh, truly variant for all time, this is the way the long run average total cost curve would look. So in other words, if you took all of those short run curves and got the minimum point on them, this is where the way your curve would look, right? It would keep going down and then it would start to flatten out. Well, the reason that we talk about this is that this area of the curve, this, This is called economies of scale. This is where the average total cost curve is decreasing. This is where we're taking advantage of specialization. People are specializing in doing one, one piece of the work, and they get really good at producing that one piece. And they keep doing it over and over again. They can do it for about seven or eight hours, and then it's good for the day. But they produce it at the best possible rate. They don't have to try and do every job equally as well, though they pick one specific, specific one and do it. That's when you experience your economies of scale. Specialization. Once you get in here, where your long run average total cost curve isn't changing too very much, it might be going down just a little bit inside of there and then starting to go up just a little bit towards the end, but basically it's staying even. Basically, here's where you're, you're getting constant, and that's an N in there, returns to scale. Basically, the average total cost curve isn't going up or down at all. It's basically staying roughly the same, and so you're constant, so that as you produce more, you're not necessarily being able to produce it at a cheaper cost. It's basically going to stay the same. And if your price is somewhere up here, you still want to be doing that because you're making money, right? Every time the price is above the average cost, that's profit, all right? And the last stage, where you're starting to, to lose money, right? Where you're starting, well, not lose money, I shouldn't say that. This is just where the average total cost starts to increase per unit. This is called diseconomies of scale. And this is where you've got such a huge company that there's just no way you can keep everybody on the same page. Imagine, if you will, you're looking at, say, IBM. In the very beginning, IBM had uh, a very good economies of scale, right? When they were building computers the very first time. And they were really only building computers in the United States when they first started, right? And they started expanding. They started expanding from being just in Silicon Valley to all around the California area. They moved into New York. They moved into Chicago and the Midwest area. They had, they had firms all over the place, right? And they also branched out into consulting. And their economies of scale kept decreasing and decreasing. Well, they kept growing, though, right? They expanded. They expanded into Canada. They expanded into Mexico. They started to get to the stage where there are constant returns of scale. But now, IBM is huge. It's got factories in India, Russia, Brazil, Africa, Europe, you name it. Practically every country has got an IBM either think tank or, or, uh, or workshop somewhere in the, in the world. Well, how does IBM keep all those people on the same page? How do they all know what IBM wants them to do? There's really only one centralized office. How do they do it? They spend a lot of money doing it. That's where those diseconomies of scale come from. Basically, you've gotten so big, you've got so many cooks, you spoiled the broth. Right? So keep, in track of, keep track of what economies of scale are and what diseconomies of scale are, and we'll sort of get back to them a little bit, or, a little bit later when we start talking about mon monopolies, because this thing actually plays a part. So 
There's a long run analysis of our perfect competition, or of our production costs.